So in America, I was drawn to Unitarian Universalism because of the two arguments which directly pertain to Catholicism, and I was raised Catholic. And so I completely agreed with them. And even though I didn't know about Unitarianism and Universalism, that's why I stopped being Catholic. I disagreed with the idea of the Holy Trinity, and I disagreed with the idea of eternal damnation. Both are Unitarian and Universalism. So fair, supported. We've done that now, we've discussed that. But I am personally beyond that argument, you know, 15 years later. And I wonder what we are doing as a faith group, as a tradition movement. Because half the time, even amongst Christian circles, we don't exactly argue these points. You know, this is not the hills we die on. We, we aren't having theological debates. You know, the only time I've heard of it in a modern context is from the movie Come Sunday, based on the real life experience of a minister played by Chiwetel Ejiofor, you know, Baptist preacher in American Midwest. He preaches a universalist message in a mega church and then was abandoned by all but a small majority of people who attended. And that preacher, it's based on, it's still there today. It's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, it's home to the largest Unitarian Universalist congregation. I think we as a faith group, as a community who wants to make the world a better place, need to take a massive leap forward. At least those of us who are maybe not theist or Christian leaning in our spirituality. You know, I would even say maybe we change our name. So the title of my message is Beloved Communitarians. Out of a pun, as you can tell. Uh, thank you for the chuckle. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> you know, and that's because I personally believe in the message of the beloved community. So I would think, I would hope that one day we change our mission to building the beloved community. Because I like to think that's what we're about. Um, we're certainly about community. And it's one of those things I think we need to be promoting and making all efforts to building that paradise where we can say this, this is the beloved community. Make direct impact on ensuring abundance, equality, and peace as the norm to counteract the three evils that Martin Luther King described as poverty, racism, and militarism. And I would expand racism to also include the many lines of division, which include sexism, homophobia, ableism, and a million and one injustices under the sun that divides people. Because that's personally the message which keeps me in here. So I granted, I'm, I'm being selfish. I might even be naive, but in my 12 years between being a Unitarian Universalist in America and a Unitarian in the UK, I've only had a handful of conversations about the Unitarian conversation and argument. And usually it's to tell people about the history of Unitarianism. So we as a faith group whose name originated and centers around those God-based theological argument, why do we still keep calling ourselves that if we hardly talk about it? I like to think we have bigger things to worry about than a 2000 year old argument. Whoop de doo, I say. I say we go on to the big picture. Not to say we haven't done it already, but I say we take that anti empire stance, we take that decolonization stance, destroy patriarchy, racism, et cetera, we move on. And you might be thinking to yourself, Julio, you're awesome. I agree with you. <laughs> you're in my heart, buddy. Points, hearts, right? Yes. Thank you. I, I like to think I am. Or maybe you're like, nah, Julio, you're crazy. Get a grip, buddy. Estás loco, man. Fine. I respect that. But again, I might be being selfish, might be naive, but the only time I reflect on the Bible or any sacred text, any scripture, is when they're talking about things like making weapons and, or not making weapons, melting weapons into farm equipment. When they talk about getting rid of debt, when they talk about 
dancing in celebration and joy. I don't rarely reflect on the Unitarian or Universalist argument anymore. And I think we can have serious conversations about what it means to have a beloved community, to discuss the blockers we face individually. Let us ask ourselves, what blocks us from reaching our potential, from living our best lives? What worries us? What causes us existential dread? For example, I know rent and mortgage are certainly massive in this country and in America. I remember meeting homeless who they could afford a phone, they could afford the gym membership to take a shower, some of the niceties in life. All having a full-time job, mind you, still homeless, but rent, that was their killer. I think how much I've had to pay in rents. And I think, well, pff, there goes all of most of my paycheck. It's one of those things, and I say this in the modicum of humor, I would agree with conservatives because, you know, maybe we do need to go back to that 1950s mentality and only because imagine what would happen if only one of us, like say my wife and I were working, if only one of us could bring in enough money for the family. That's the point I'm focusing on. I'm not pointing on any other conservative argument. What if my wife and I were both able to work half time, pay for everything, and enjoy five days a week in leisure and in fun instead of us both working 60 hours to struggle? No way. How nice would that be? Two days a week of work? I don't know about you, but I'm excited about it. But that's me. I'm biased. Again, it's the only thing on the very nuanced point that I just mentioned that I would agree with a right-wing conservative on. And again, I'm not disrespecting any political views that we have here today, but that's just me. I'm being honest about myself. But again, I'm young. I once was right-wing and now I'm so far left. I don't like being right-handed, you know. But I've rambled enough. The, the readings that I asked to be read today, mostly chosen from Stephen Lingwood, he's a Unitarian theologian in the UK, wrote a wonderful book called Seeking Paradise, A Unitarian Mission in Our Times. I think it's a solid book. I appreciated it. It's about 130 to 140 pages long. He concisely illustrates a useful and practical conversation to have. And it's plain about his message. Admittedly, it takes a little while to get there. But overall, I agree with him, excuse me. And I've had the same sentiment as he since 2015. And one of the readings uh, I brought, uh, or excerpts was from James Luther Adams. He's one of my favorite people, a uh, Unitarian uh, minister from Chicago um, in the US. Um, but he lived and studied in a time in Germany during fascism, was on the rise in the 1930s and he had a heavy critique of fascism. And in his ministry in Chicago um, from the 40s to the 60s, I believe, uh, he was engaged in organizing uh, various activism, labor, et cetera. Anyway, powerful book, highly recommended. There are certain things in the UK, which I think has made great headway in the direction that I personally have a vision for the beloved community. Things like the Equality Act of 2008, free health care in the NHS, which I once again have to be thankful for because I had hernia treatment half a month ago, a month and a half ago. And in America, I wouldn't be surprised if it cost at least 10,000 British pounds, you know, and then that's without health insurance. But even with health insurance, I probably would have paid a thousand out of pocket. Uh, so it was free and I'm grateful for it. Tuition is certainly cheaper in the UK as well, as opposed to America where it's debts in the trillions for people you know, bound higher education debt. And granted, things are not perfect in the UK. There's plenty of room for improvement. I think we, as a faith group, this congregation, you know, we maybe around the country are still caught up in God questions, which honestly, I get, I get it. We're all spiritual and by nonprofit standards, we're certainly a religious institution, but again, whoop de doo I think the God conversation is a distraction when half the time I could care less about 
what a war was fought over so much as that there was a war. I could care less why, or even if a person deserves to be homeless, so much as that there is still homelessness. I could care less about so many things. What I want is for us to band together and say enough is enough. And I mean this as, as a faith group. I think it's ironic that we're a group called Unitarians and yet we're not very united. Honestly, it breaks my heart. So we Unitarians or I propose beloved communitarians, but again, that's just me. We need to take, we need to be that faith group which takes those ancient Christian principles of calling out empire and colonial behavior against a super wealthy elite minority who use the military in war to distract from the system of inequality within it. I know what you're thinking, who knew Christianity was about that life? I didn't <clears throat> call off history. I have a history degree, sorry, that's if you didn't know. Um, but crucifixion, and again, I don't identify heavily as a Christian, but I think it's important to note that crucifixion was not just a dude, you annoyed us, get on the cross and die. It was a punishment for treason against the state. So what was Jesus preaching? Something probably pissed people off in the higher realm of things. I mean, it certainly called into question the very essence of Rome. And we could do the same, again, whether we identify as Christian or not. Our faith, our collectiveness does not require the traditional belief in God or a belief in God at all. It requires a belief in the sanctity of life, in the sanctity of balance between community and individual, it requires, in my opinion, some belief that paradise on earth can exist. I'm not saying it's going to be a utopia. Humanity will never be without some modicum of conflict, some disagreement, or occasional stupidity. But as a faith group, my understanding is for the past 50 years, we've agreed to disagree about God. We've been flexible, very fluid about spirituality. We've certainly been open to revelation and various sources of inspiration. People, fair enough, can say that we Unitarians believe in anything because of that flexible God, religious, spiritual language. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, yeah, transcendence in general, we can, we can be saying that statement. But in matters of justice, I like to think we're a bit more particular on Personally, I think we could be a bit more particular about it. I think we could say, hey, maybe we change our name, maybe we don't. But we're passionate, we argue about certain things. I hardly ever hear you talk about God. And so I'm going to just close with saying that something that Stephen Lingwood said and something I have to agree with, that the vision of the beloved community, whether we agree to disagree on it, et cetera, it's not going to be just a political one. It's not going to be just a social one. It needs to be so many things, multifaceted, to include that spiritual dynamic. And while he argues for faith in God, and I certainly support that if you do, we need to at least believe in the human spirit. Or I think maybe a bit of reflection on nature, lessons from science, certainly what it takes to have a bountiful and harmonious environment. And again, while I don't know if humans are inherently good or bad, what I do believe that we need to agree on is that the majority of people can come together and solve and handle all of the injustice in the world. We can deal with the distractions that divide us that we can then unite as one global community. At least that's what I think. And I certainly support that argument made by Occupied Wall Street ages ago. You know, to paraphrase, essentially, if you're not in the top wealthiest bracket, you're in the lowest bracket. And I think that gives us a solid supermajority to work with <laughs> throughout the world. And once we eliminate the issues that block us from living our potentials, we can then take the next step as humanity. We can heal our souls, whether it be literal or proverbial. We can heal the planet. We can heal society. We can, instead of just having charities to alleviate issues, we can eradicate them entirely. Maybe, again, changing our name, beloved communitarians, is too much, but you get my point. 
I would even say if we're talking about promoting equality, we call ourselves equalitarians. I mean, we need to imagine how we do things this is the greater point. We're a living tradition. We need to take those steps forwards. We need to have a concrete mission. And of course, coming on Sundays is wonderful, but we need to do as much as that. We need to do more than just keeping the lights on. We need to be out organizing. We need to show the art to make the world a better place. We need to get others involved. We need to be there for each other when we struggle. Community. That's how we make a difference. So I say to you all, blessed be. Thank you for listening. So before we do the next piece of music, I just want to introduce it again because I think it has a powerful message, a very popular gospel song down by the riverside. It quotes from particular parts of the Bible, which again, I say I do reflect on. Uh, and I, I meant to have the passage memorized for today, but essentially again saying we need to melt down swords and put them into plowshares, farming equipment, um, sit down by the fig tree and study war no more. That's a powerful message. And the music does a bit more than that, but please enjoy this piece of music and reflect on it. Tatiana, if you would kindly, thank you. This entrepreneur brand logo that was done by a top freelancer and Fiverr is simply what?